Welcome to the podcast, or webcast as we usually say. Uh, so I'm Marcus. And I'm Tom. And uh, today we have a very exciting uh, webcast in front of you. Usually they say a picture is worth more than a thousand words, as the gold saying goes. Uh, but before we get started, let's have some just uh, general uh, housekeeping rules. We are live on YouTube. If you have any sort of uh, questions, you may enter them in the chat. If you for some reason forgot to to ask some questions, then you may um, email us, uh, Marcus uh, at Weld and Tom at Weld. Uh, all right. And uh, today's uh, general agenda, we can just briefly here jump ahead. Um, we're going to do a short presentation about Weld. We're also going to have some, some focus on vectoring on art. Yeah, exactly. We're going to go through how to crop and resize images uh, on the web. On the web. Um, and also how to work with responsive images, uh, which is important in a world where everybody's using a mobile device or a tablet device. You have to make sure your, your images look good on every platform. Uh, we're going to also going to look into how to optimize images for, for uh, different devices. And working with transparent images is a, is a nice uh, bonus feature. And finally, have a brief look at how to use GIFs animations in your uh, in your uh, websites. Excellent. So before that, very very short. What is uh, what is Weld? Yeah. Well, Weld uh, is is a web design tool um, that acts like a visual booster for for your CMS. In fact, any CMS out there. It's very, very easy to use. So if you use the PowerPoint uh, for, for an example, then you'll definitely be home in, in Weld. You don't need to know code. Um, it's, it's just all very much drag and drop. Um, it's also fully responsive um, and uh, the content can be you know, uh, accessed uh, from the user side on, on any, any single device. Weld also integrates with ease to any current uh, CMS. And you can add content uh, on a number of different panes. As an example, uh, Indiska here, uh, they choose to embed content in a number of windows or, or panes on their site. And on those windows and panes, they, they, this allows them to be very, very creative and do some A-B testing um, on a daily basis. Uh, and um, yeah, be, be very dynamic in their communication with their, with their customers. Some of our customers, um, also here we talked about Indiska just, just uh, before, and if, if asking them what is well given them, and I think this, this saying is just sums up well, well very nicely. Th they really believe that well has given them a lot of creativity back, uh, which I know is a challenge when, when uh, being more successful uh, on, on the web. So um, without any further ado, I think we'll start with some demo. Yes, exactly. So um, I'll jump into Weld immediately. Um, so um, I'm going to start with just orienting your, uh, you in the interface of Weld, um, so you know what's going what, what's going on. Um, so Weld is a web well uh, web based tool. You run it in your browser, and um, uh, we have modeled a lot after Keynote and PowerPoint. So if you used those tools or if you have used um, any of the Adobe tools, uh, you should feel right at home in Weld. So up here you have a toolbar uh, where you can create new objects such as text objects, uh, images, rectangles and so on. The insert menu contains more complex objects such as forms and buttons and image feeds from Instagram and so on. On the uh, left side, you have a side panel with uh, pages in your project. So each project can contain multiple pages that can be used to display uh, more information, uh, but it can also be used um, for A-B testing of content. So you can design two different versions and see what performs the best. And you can also use it for scheduling of content, like you want a, a certain piece of content to go live at a certain uh, point in time. On the other panel, you have formatting uh, based on the object you have selected. You can select fonts, colors, shape, form, and so on. 
Uh, but this is all about images. Um, so we're gonna go through the basics. And um, so here I have a, a, a sample project just to give you uh, a, a point of reference. It's a blank white canvas in, in, the, in the background and I have some images already in place. I have some buttons here. Uh, this could be a piece of content for an e-commerce site, for instance. Um, so what I'm going to do first is to just import a photo. And there's a couple of ways you can do that. One easy way is just to use the image tool and draw a placeholder. Uh, I can then double click on that placeholder. Let's just adjust it to import an image. You can also drag and drop an image straight from your desktop. Once you have an image in place, um, you can just resize it. And um, as, you, as you can see, when I resize quickly, it takes a second and then sort of the, uh, the image fills out the rectangle. That's because Weld is constantly optimizing the image in the background. So you can actually upload a high resolution um, image from, uh, from a computer into Weld and it will scale down the image and make sure to display um, an image of the right size and right pixel density for the device that's ac accessing the content. So as a content creator, you don't have to uh, think about um, having different images for different platforms. Well, we'll do all that work for you. In fact, you can actually upload a Photoshop file straight into Weld. I can just drag and drop. Here's a layered Photoshop file. I can drag that into Weld. You can see the, the background behind the canvas turns dark blue. That it, it recognizes I'm about to drop something on it. And here's that photo. I'll rescale it so you can see it in its entirety. It, it looks like this in, in Weld. Um, it looks like this in Photoshop. Let's zoom in a little bit. Uh, so in Photoshop, I have different layers with a rectangle and text and so on. In Weld, it becomes just one big image. Uh, so it sort of compresses all the layers to one and it actually treats it as a JPEG uh, image. But that's a con convenient way in your workflow that you can just work in Photoshop, save it as a PSD file and upload that straight to Weld. Um, there's a couple of basic ways of uh, cropping and resizing images in Weld. And the first ones I want to go through are the fit image toggle. So Weld has two ways of dealing with um, um, images automatically. So the default way for photos is that it's tried, it, it crops the image to, f uh, to fill out its um, rectangle. So when I resize the image, the, the box here, it will sort of pop out um, and recrop the image so it fits the rectangle. That's one of the default uh, behaviors in Weld. The other one is called fit image or fit to uh, rectangle. So with that, when that is enabled, uh, Weld will always scale down the image so the entire image is, is shown within the bounding box. Um, this is less useful for photos because you get white space around the photo, but it's very useful when it comes to handling logo types and um, icons and that kind of graphics where you want the entire graphics to be shown at all time. Uh, so speaking of which, I'm going to import a vector logo. So I've created a logo in Sketch, which is a, one of my favorite tools for vector art. Um, I made it with the text tool and then I converted it to, um, to outlines. So it's a pure sort of vector uh, curve um, document. And I can then export that as SVG from Sketch. And this also works in Adobe Illustrator. And the resulting the result is a, is a SVG file which is a very compact, small vector 
file and I can drag that into weld as well. So SVGs are uh, great when it comes to icons and logo types and so on. It becomes very um, quick to load because it's vector information only and um, you can scale it up and down to any device which is really really powerful. So when I import an, a vector image, actually it's the fit image is already toggled on because it, it recognizes that it's an SVG image and uh, the fit image option is, is a better choice. So no matter how small I make this box, it will always scale down the logo so it fits within. However, if I force weld to crop instead, I can remove that. And actually, it still scales the image. However, if I want to um, um, override Weld's default behavior of automatically trying to fit the image, there's a couple of advanced image controls that I can use. Uh, I have a zoom control where I can make it, uh, go inside the image, make it larger or smaller. And you can also adjust the center point here. So maybe I want to center on another part of the image instead of her eyes or the center point. I can adjust that. Um, one important thing is to be aware of that when you start using the manual controls, uh, Weld loses a bit of its um, ability to automatically redo the content for uh, uh, different responsive layouts. If you want to learn more about how to make responsive content for different phones, and so on, uh, make sure to, to look at our other tutorial on, on YouTube. Um, but I'm just going to briefly uh, review it here, and, uh, and that tutorial covers all the tools more in detail. So, um, weld, with weld, you can adjust the image and, and the way it should look in different, for different layouts. Uh, but when you start using the, the, the manual zoom control, you sort of override a bit um, Weld's automatic handling on the image. So make sure that you double check how the image looks on every every device before, or, or at least every layout before before shipping your content. Okay, um, so you got a brief introduction to responsive images there. Um, I also want to add uh, that you uh, you can work with transparency, and that works both for uh, um, SVG artwork, but also for um, uh, PNG images. Um, so let's see if I can um, find a good PNG image to use here. Uh, should have prepared a PNG image beforehand, but uh, anyway, PNG and SVG images can both be used in Weld with, with transparency. So you can just add it on, on layers, and you can use the layering tools in Weld to control sort of what layer are shown uh, in front of what. Um, finally, I'm going to just look at how we can add a GIF image to Weld. Going on giphy.com and see if I can find a cute dog gif, for instance. So this is a cute dog. I'm going to download that to my computer first.
Okay. So now I have the dog GIF image. I can go back to Weld. And I can upload it. It's almost 4 megabytes, so it'll take a few seconds to upload. And there we go. Here's the animated little dog. Make sure it looks. So animated GIFs are super easy to um, to embed into Weld as well. Uh, a final comment: uh, in um, uh, search engines, it's important that you always have a text to describe your Im image, and that. It can be found in the right panel. Uh, you have a description field. You can write a little text describing what, what image contains. That will help Google and other search engines to properly index your, your image. And I think that's all for today. Yes. And again, if you have any more questions, uh, you're free to uh, email marcus at well.io or tom at well.io. Thank you so much for, for listening. Thank you. Bye See bye. you soon. Bye.